I'm so excited to be in church this morning. Please take your seats in his presence. Amen. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Dick Nestian. That was uh, such a wonderful opening. And I would like to welcome all of you that are worshiping with us in person. Amen. Let's celebrate one another. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And those of you worshiping with us online, we are so happy to have you guys connected with us. I pray and I believe that uh, God is going to speak to you and meet you all at the point of your need. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I I'm just so excited whenever we're coming to church, you know, and uh, we have to, you know, just, just fellowship and laugh sometimes. Don't you, don't you feel something different? You know, just to see each other and just kind of smile and laugh. You know, I know the, we're going through so much already. You know, the world is going through a whole lot. And I thank God that God is able to speak to us, you know, before things happen. How many of you remember one of the days we were at Bible study online and the Lord was showing me and telling me about some things that are going to happen. And for us to just get prepared. And this is not to scare anyone, but this is just to let us know that it's time for us to prepare our spirit mind and our spirit lives. Today is communion service. The first Sunday of December 2020 and the last month of 2020 listen y'all if you have made it this far if you have made it this far I am telling you you have every reason to give God thanks you have it I don't care what the enemy has tried to do to you this year if you're here I was just talking to one of the nurses in in-house here and I asked her I said how is it out there in the hospital she said pastor is bad she said pastor is bad you know what came to my mind Lord I thank you not that I'm celebrating for people who are out there or who are sick one way or another but I, I for me I just thank you because I'm not better than those out there we are not better than them but it's just that grace is sufficient and we have every reason to thank him. We have every reason that we can breathe without a breathing tube. We can walk without anyone putting us in the wheelchair. We can move around. We have every reason to thank him in this season. We have food on our table. We have shelter to be in. We have the air condition around us. We have light 24-7. I have every reason to thank him, y'all. It's a month of thanksgiving. If you have made it this far, if we have made it this far, look back and see what the Lord has done for you. How far he brought you. Where he brought you from. How far he picked you. When you thought you were losing your mind and God put it together. Look how far he brought you, Lord. Lord, I thank you. It couldn't have been by my own strength. It couldn't have been by my own doing. My righteousness. It, it couldn't have been because I'm so good looking. It couldn't have been because I'm the best of the best. It couldn't have been because of anything. But because he loves me. Oh yes, he loves me. He loves me. I have reason. You're driving from miles and miles and miles. You hear all kind of things in the news. I have every reason to thank him. There's killing everywhere. There's shooting everywhere. I was watching a TV the other day. Some people were just sitting down in the, in the room watching TV and something slammed in the house and, and, and just destroyed a whole place while they were still in there. It can happen anywhere. The Bible says, count your blessings and name them one by one. When you start to count your blessings, you will see that you don't have any more room to, 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 to be angry about anything. You will see you have no room for fear. You will see you have no room to complain. When you start to count your blessings, you begin to have a heart of thanksgiving. When you begin to count your blessings, if it had not been for God, this is a month of 
generosity, this amount of sacrifice, amount of prosperity, amount of thanksgiving, it's amount of giving back to God. Letting God know that you brought me this far to bless me even much more. You brought me this far to bless me even much more. Somebody give a Lord a praise and a shout in the house. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Open to the book of Matthew chapter 25 verse 34. I'm going to be reading through 40. Matthew 25. The NIV. Then the king will say to those on his right. Come. You who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. 35. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. <laughs> and I was a stranger and you invited me. Verse 36. I indeed clothed and you, I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Verse 37 says, then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we even see you, a stranger, invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? When did we? Verse 40. Then the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Somebody say, I'm doing it for the Lord. Say, I'm doing it for the Lord. Flip your Bible one more time to the book of Proverbs chapter 19. Proverbs 19, verse 17. Proverbs 19, verse 17. Amen. Thank you, Father. The Bible says... Whoever is kind to the poor, lend to the Lord. And he will reward them for what they have done. Somebody say, I'm doing it for the Lord. See, I'm doing it for the Lord. I'm going to read that one more time. Whoever is kind to the poor, lend to the Lord. What it means here is that whatever kind you show or whatever you do to any brother or sister or whether, whether in ministry, in church, the Bible calls it lending. And what is the word lending? Lending means that I'm giving something to you so at the end you give it back to me. As a matter of fact, I'm giving it to you and sometime when it's coming by, you give me with interest. How many of you have gone to the loan place to loan some money before? If you have gone to the loan place to loan some money, I have had to, you know, a time to, you know, loan money one, once upon a time many years ago. I didn't like the fact that they put so much interest in that loan. And while I'm paying, I thought maybe I'm almost finished paying, I'm done paying. But when I go to the lady, she tells me, your money is not ended here. You're still paying. I'm like, what are you talking? She said, you're just paying the interest. Because we lended you some money. So, and the Bible here is saying that whoever does any kind to the poor, whether in giving, whatsoever it is, you are lending it to the Lord. That means God owes you. Somebody say, he owes me. Say, God owes me. If you have been able to lend to the poor or do things in the 
church and the kingdom of God, sincerely from your heart, God is owing you something. And this is the month where God is about to prosper you because you have accumulated so much interest in your life because God is saying, as you lend to me, I will visit you with prosperity. The title of my message this morning is The Key to Prosperity. The Key to Prosperity. I believe that all of us here want to prosper. I don't see anyone here who don't like prosperity. We all want to have things. We all want to have cars. We all want to have good homes. You know, I, I was talking to um, someone the other day, and I told her, I said, you know, I love my little car, and I'm good with it, you know. As long as it drives me from point A to point B. And um, I'm good. And she turned around. She told me, she said, Papa, I want me a Range Rover. I said, all right now. Yeah. You want a Range Rover? She said, yeah, that's what my dream car is. She said, that's our dream car. I said, you go for it. You're going to get a Range Rover because God is owing you something. As long as you keep doing and keep giving, God is going to visit you with a Range Rover one day. Because that was the same thing that happened to me too. Amen. So all of us want something. We, we all want to have things. We all want to have cars. We all want to have good things in life. These are called material things. We live in a world and in a culture of materialism or materialism. Amen. Excuse my English. Materialism. I have a hard time pronouncing that. Sometimes I want to speak it in a way that materialism. Yeah, I think that's the best place to clap for your pastor. So you make me feel good. So I can bite my tongue the more. Hallelujah. One day I was trying to quote some things that I didn't realize I was biting my tongue. I said, you know what, Lord, you know what I'm trying to say. People everywhere are naturally driven by material stuff. Naturally, we are all driven by material stuff. We want more houses. We want more cars. There's nothing wrong with that. We want more money. As a matter of fact, our kids want more toys. I've been to a house one day and I visited. The kids, they have a section where they have their toys, man. It was just, I, I was walking like this. Like hitting some things that it was just too much toy, too many toys. And they said, my mommy's going to buy me another one. My daddy say, he's going to buy me another one. I'm like, what are you going to do with all these toys? Material. We all want stuff and stuff and stuff. The goal is to get more and more and more in life. And just about the time we think we have all these things, everything that we gather, every car and every house and whatever that we think we have, it's time for us to start thinking about refinancing. When we have all these things, we're, we're wrestling with bankruptcy. and Things that we think that we acquired become totally outdated. Sometimes you, you buy a brand new car before you know it. It's 2021 coming. I had a cell phone that I used for years. It was just about $40, $60. It had everything inside of it. And every year they keep bringing out a new phone. And you see people lining up to buy a phone that just came out. It's the newest X, whatever, whatever, whatever they call it. I don't even know the name. I just got blessed recently. I've, the, I've never had an expensive phone in my life. This is the first time I'm having, I, what is this, Galaxy something, 20? What is that? I don't even know what the name is. But I know it's some Galaxy thing I was blessed with it and when I looked at it I'm like oh this is good oh this is so good so we want more stuff we want more stuff and every year we keep upgrading and changing how many of you remember those back in the day where we used to oh I need to post that picture I I went to a party it was a party for people born in the late 60s and 70s early 70s and they, are, they they want you to dress the old with the big baggy and the the afro and the you know the lapel so huge and all of that i took pictures you know 
I'm, I'm going to share it one day with you guys. You guys need to see me on that thing. Oh, my God. My pants were like this. You know, my afro, and I had my glasses on. And so when we went to this party, I mean, I said, that was then. Life was so good. Nobody cared about. The higher your shoe, the better. The higher your shoe is, the better for you. I'm telling you, the wider your pants, the better. I mean, you can walk and clean everywhere without even looking for a cleaner to clean your house. Your pants will clean everywhere. I'm telling you, the brother, the lapel, the shoulder thing, I mean, some of, some of them have shoulder pads, you know. You're always like this. When you're walking, you know, it's not like you're angry at anybody, but your shoulder pads are just like this. That was that time. That was the grooving thing. Before you knew it was happening, it started to shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink. Look at my pants. Look at my pants. He's not even touching the floor. Look at Minister Andrew. Look at him. Things are changing every day by day. It's all about material stuff. We are pursuing things, but God is speaking here in the book of Matthew chapter 25, verse 30, uh, 34 to 40. It says, when did we see you, a stranger, and invite you in? Verse 37. When the righteous man asked and said, we are after chasing all these things. And God is saying. You forgot about the right thing to do. You were after chasing after all this material stuff. But that is not the real prosperity. That is not the way to prosper as a child of God. When life becomes all about material things, we will never be satisfied with everything. Can I say that one more time? When life becomes all about material things, we'll never be satisfied with everything. There's so much to life than what will bring satisfaction to our spirit. Amen. There is only one antidote to material stuff in life. And one thing that will give you the key and the opening to prosperity is generosity. Somebody say generosity. This is a month of giving. As a matter of fact, we started since Thanksgiving. It was a month of giving for me. People here, we have a foundation back at home. We call it the hop, the hops, helping other people survive. Now, every year about this time, we're sending some stuff to help the less privileged people. We love to give. Our church is a giving church. Sometimes we send in cash donations. You have seen us. We've done it here many times when we did the garage giveaway. We brought items and we gave to people. We did other things internally and externally for other people. Why? Because we want to get into the point where God said, for you to prosper, you must be generous. For us to prosper, we must be generous. So generosity is one of the key ingredients to prosperity. Rick Warren says, every time you are generous, you have a spiritual victory in your heart. Every time you're generous in your heart. Then every time you're generous, your heart grows. Every time you're generous, you break the grip of materialism in your life. So it's so important to be ge more generous, to be more a giver than a taker. Are you listening to me? Our society and our world are driven by ones with the most material things. We are driven by that. The most stuff you have, you think you're, you, 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 you're, you're the most wealthiest or you, you are prospered. We are driven by money. One who have the more money in bank accounts and all of that. But I've come to realize that no matter how all these things that we have, one with the most things will still die. Whether or not they've got everything, one day we will all die. The Bible says, give and it will come back to you. 
good measure, pressed down, shaking together. One of the keys to generosity, one of the key to prosperity is generosity. In seasons like this, be a giver. There are people around you who are probably have not had three square meals like you. Be a giver. As a parent today, our children need to watch us being generous because they are not learning. They are not going to learn that from anywhere else. Let our children see us model generosity so that they can learn it too. That is where prosperity begins. When your children and our children begin to see how much we do for the things of God and other people, you're already planting prosperity in them. Anyone who knows how to give never lacks. Anyone who knows how to give never lacks. Are you listening to me? If you want to prosper, choose generosity and it will transform your life and relationship with other people and with God. If you want to enjoy prosperity in life, learn to give generously because you will remain poor if you are stingy. I want to give you keys to prosperity. The reason why some of us are still struggling, I mean, tell me, if you have 20 shoes and we pass on, will you take those shoes with you? You probably will not even know which shoe, your favorite shoe, they will not even put, probably put it on you. I've done a lot of funerals before. And I've seen the people laying down in the casket. All they have there is just the smile on their face and that's it. And whatever anybody, how they toss them and everything. But what will remain is what they have done for other people. What they have done be remembered by the kingdom of God. What they have given to the things of God. Whom they have helped as children of God. That is what is going to be remembered. The memory of what they have done is what will be remembered. What will you be remembered with? That is prosperity for me. Prosperity is not prosperity until you are able to affect someone's life. With what you have. When you drive on the street, you see these people on the street, the beggars. There's a man here all the time whenever we pass and drive with mama. There's no older guy. He knows my car. Every time we stop, we give him something. And, you know, when a loose change, whatever it is. We've taken food to some people out there, buy some burgers and stuff, and just hang out with some of these guys and say, hey, you don't even know if I'm a pastor. I look, I just buddy with them and tell them, look, I know where God picked me from. And you think God is going to leave me? He said, anyone who does to these people, you are lending to me. Because I put you in a position. That's why we have a church like this. Where if somebody like you is not a Ronald McDonald, you sow your seeds and your giving and your blessing into the ministry. And God sees your heart. And the ministry in turn uses that to reach out to other people outside. You are all tapping into that blessing of that ministry. Because as God remembers that ministry, God remembers you. Because without it, the kingdom is not expanded. Amen. So, when you are not able to give generously, you will remain poor. When I mean generously, whether in food, in kind, we take clothing, we take things. And there are people who have needs of those things. Be a giver. You will never be poor. Proverbs 11, 24 to 25. Proverbs 11, 24 to 25. NLT. The Bible says, give freely and become more wealthy. My God. Give freely. Freely means don't, don't, don't be hold. Don't be coerced. Give freely. And become more what? wealthy. Do you know what wealthy is? Wealthy is more than being blessed. Oh. It's more than riches. You know what? Wealth means that you have more than you have. There's no ending. You are, you are wealthy in everywhere. Wealthy. But look at this. He said, be stingy. And do what? Lose everything. 
The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be what? Refreshed. My God, did you see that? In this season of Christmas time that we're in, refresh others and you will be refreshed. You see, it's amazing that one of the things that God has taught us as children of God is the attitude of giving. As a matter of fact, is, 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 a, is, is a principle of heaven. That every religion practices that. I was watching something on the TV the other day. It was about the monk. There's a channel that we, Mama and I like to watch. It's a food channel. And this guy traveled all around the world trying different food. And he went to this Asian place and it was the, full of monks. And he wanted to be, uh, see how they relate, how they do things, how, how these monk people are, how, what made them who they are. You know, they shave their hair and they, they walk barefoot and they dress certain kind of way. And so this guy said, I was watching him, that every time in the month, the monk would dress up and they march around the city or the community with something holding, with a basket of things. And then while they're marching in the community, the people cook food, different kind of things, and they drop it in the like offering basket or something, but it's food. They pile the food together. They are giving to the religion or to the culture of the monks because they have a belief that if we give the monks and they are able to eat and satisfy, God will remember them. That is the monk religion. Now, when you come to Islam, they do the same thing. The Islams have a culture of giving to the less privileged also. Because I grew up in the north, so I know what I'm talking about. So giving is, is a principle that it, it, it's not just because you are a Christian or whether you are an unbeliever. It's an earthly principle. Bill Gates, I don't know his fate, but I know that man is a giver. The reason why America today is the way it is and it's still standing is because America is a giving country. That whenever there is a disaster anywhere, usually America is always the first to respond with giving generously. When the disaster happened in Louisiana and New Orleans and Katrina and whatever, you saw how people were giving to each other. It's the heart from so much that God has given to all of us. So, but the Bible said, if you continue to give generously, you will prosper. And God will refresh you if you refresh others. Generosity attracts prosperity. I want you to write that down. Generosity attracts prosperity. A stingy person will never prosper no matter how much hard you work or try to save. If you are stingy, you will never prosper. It will be hard for you. To prosper. You will never lack if you learn how to sow and give generously. So in this season of Christmas, learn to be a giver. I've taught you guys here so many times. The attitude of giving. Don't give murmuring. Don't give complaining. When, we get, when you get your tithe or your paycheck or offering... So to the things of God. So in a good ground, wherever church that you are planted. Because the Bible said that where you are planted is where you flourish. Where you are planted is where you flourish. And that ground has got a way to magnet the heaven, the blessings of heaven to reach out to you. I, I, I don't see a giver who ever lacks. Givers never lack. Giving with the right attitude. Not, oh, pastor, here we go again. Pastor's talking about money. No, I don't need your money. Mm -mm. I'm not trying to be proud or pride or anything. I don't need your money. Because it is God who gives us the power and the strength to make what? Wealth. In your community, find somebody that you can be a blessing to. During Thanksgiving here, the Lord led me to just be a blessing of little, little amount to help people buy turkey. From our old church, we have displayed that so many times. 
God will tell me, write a check of such and such and give to somebody. Not for anything. But that is just the heart that I have. You saw Elder Sam the other day popped up here and took out something and just, and you guys are catching the revelation. Our church is a giving church. And that's why you will not be poor in Jesus' name. You will continue to prosper as you continue to sow in the things of God. Amen. The Bible says in, book, in the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 38, it says, give and it will come back to you, King James. Give and it will what? If you don't give, it will never come back to you. Good measures, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give unto you? Shall men give unto you? God can trouble somebody in Port Arthur to remember you. God can trouble somebody in London to remember you. God can trouble. Let me tell you something. I was, I was one day, I was just chilling down at home. And I got a phone call. You know. And I'm like, who is this? The person said to me. Pastor, I can't sleep. You can't sleep. What happened? Take some sleeping pills. He said, no, you are the reason. I said, what have I done? I started to think, you know that kind of accusation where you have been accused so many times in your life. Anytime people call you, you say, what is it again? What have I done? So I started to think to myself, maybe I've done something I don't even remember. Let me think through. I started to apologize. Bro, I'm sorry. Whatever I've done, you know, you know how I am sometimes, you know. He said, no, 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 pastor. You know, because he was sounding like, I need to do this. I said, what is the problem? He said, pastor, man, God has been troubling me. That I, I don't want to do it, but I can't sleep. I needed to sow this amount of money into your life. I said, oh, oh, okay, talk. I'm listening right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think I picked it up in the spirit. I just didn't want to tell you. Yeah, go ahead. I'm listening right now. Because when you hear money sometimes, your antenna will change. Whether you're sleepy, you wake up. The Bible says that money is power. You know why? That's why the enemy don't want you to give money because there's power in it. Especially when you bring it to the altar of God. Do you know what you have done when you bring your money to the altar? You are exchanging natural thing to supernatural thing. It's no longer yours anymore. It's now God's business. What they do with it, whatever happens to it, is no longer your business. It's now God's business. As long as you're giving it with the right heart. That's where prosperity starts from. And I told the brother, I said, thank you. You did good. After some few months or about a year or so, the person called and said, my God, I'm glad I obeyed. I said, you obeyed what? He said, the blessings of God that make it rich located me after I released that. I said, oh yeah, more, 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 more. Bring more. Don't say that the blessing of God, you so more. He said, no, Pastor, I'm not hearing that one again. I didn't hear it. This is now flesh. So, but God has a way of enriching us if we have the heart of giving. Yesterday we drove past the very first place we lived in the United States when I first came many 20 plus years ago. It was in Beechnut. And mama looked at the place. She said, wow. She said, daddy, do you remember this? I said, yeah. Hmm. If you tell me to live there for free. <laughs> for free. <laughs> I would say you don't like me at all. It's the kind of place where you live with bulletproof. You have to live there with bulletproof every night. You don't go out at a certain time of the night here in America. Even when you hear a sound, pa, you are awake. It's not gunshot. It's just somebody slapping somebody outside. <laughs> so mama said, do you remember this place where we used to live? My God. God has been so good to you, my friend. God has been so good to you. When you look at your life 10 years back and where you are, you will say, God, I am not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. You have done something great in my life because of my giving. Because of my giving. God will always remember you. I don't care what you're dealing with. God will always remember you. I looked at the place, I said, but I know there are some people. The other day we went over there and we took some stuff and we went to the same apartment 
And we just talked to the management and we told them we brought some things, some food to give out to people here. They can come and take it. They announced it. And people came out at the same apartment. When we finished and I told the management, I said, I lived here. That's where we lived. She said, wow. Why did you move? I said, don't ask me. <laughs> I'm telling you something of over 20 something years. You're telling me, why did I move? I moved to a higher level, a higher ground. When God gets ready to move you to a higher level, you don't go back to the low level. Because of the seeds you have sown, God will remember you. Every seed speaks in your future. Every seed speaks for your destiny. Every seed speaks for your family. Every seed speaks for your... Every seed speaks for your mother and father. That's what it does. Give generously and God will remember you. In this season... Be a blessing. Some of you think that, oh, if you give to pastor. No, 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 no. The Bible says anyone who gives a prophet a cup of water, there is no way you will give without attracting something. You will always attract something. Giving attracts a blessing. There are some of you who have caught that revelation in this place. I give too. I do give. I give. Man, I give. Until I have no more. I give. I'm telling you. Mama and I, we're givers. We're givers. And I want you to hear me later because it's working for me. Don't always look at, oh, I don't, how am I going to, no. if God troubles you to do, do it. That means God is trying to activate something in you. That means God is trying to quicken something. God is trying to trouble somebody on your behalf. Promotion comes by your giving. <laughs> promotion comes by your giving job opening comes by your giving you activate the kingdom of heaven the Bible says and I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you have no room to receive that's what your giving does it attracts, it's a magnet you see Bill Gates he will never be poor in his life no matter how you hate him curse him doesn't matter. He will never be poor. He doesn't go to church, but he's a giver. It's an earthly principle. It's like when you sow, expect a harvest. Especially when you sow to the things of God. Your time is important. Is a seed. Your time. Don't think you're wasting your time coming to church. Why am I thinking? I'm tired. This church thing, sir. So you, see, you have already reaped because you are sowing with complaint. You are sowing with complaint. Let me show you something real quick. Let me show you something real quick. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Starting from verse 6. NIV. Second Corinthians 9. It says, remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also what reap what generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly. No, 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 no. Pastor, oh my God. Pastor, how am I going to pay my bill? Pastor, how do you know? Not under compulsion. As a church, I will never put compulsion on anybody. I will teach you on how to give. Not just only to live in Prince Church. Even to be a blessing to other people out there. Because I know what giving does. For God loves what? A cheerful. A, not a complaining giver. The moment you complain about your giving, you have already received your reward. And some of you, please, don't do this. If your tithe is 10%, I would rather you give more than reduce from what God says. I would rather you... <laughs> oh God, I don't have the time to go into all of that. Please, it's a warning. If there's a spiritual implication to that, don't say, oh, God will understand. My tithe is supposed to be $100. But do you know the Bible says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. You know why? Because of your obedience to that 10%. God will never rebuke anything for your sake when you go against what he has said. That's why people struggle. 
Sometimes when I come to some people, I ask them, do you tithe? Do you give? This church, we have sent money to some people outside. We're a small church, but we do big things here. Some of you are witnesses to that. I'm not teaching you what I don't practice. I'm, teach, I'm teaching you what I practice and it's working for me. We've sown seed to other people outside of this church. And it's working for us. Forget what you're seeing right now. Because there are some seed that when you sow, they don't grow right away. There are some seed that when you plant it, the deeper it takes, the longer it takes, oh my God, the bigger your blessings. Are. What God is doing for you is not just a McDonald's stuff. God is taking time to root you in so that when your blessing comes, you would have forgotten the time you sowed the seed. If it doesn't hurt, then there's no gain. But when it hurts, that's when there is gain. Look for those of you who are online, wherever you are planted. And please, if you are planted in a Bible-believing church, not all these church things that we're seeing everywhere. Online people doing all kind of sweet mouth to just take your money from you. Please, let it be a true, let your spirit lead you. And if you are part of Living Praise Church, you have tested the ground. Let the altar be a place where you sow your seed. Don't be coerced. We don't sell handkerchief here. We don't sell anything to, if you reuse it, you're going to get a husband. If you give one dollar, you're going to get twenty dollars. We don't do that gambling here. No. That's not the principle of God. All he says is give. And it will come back to you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together, running over, shall men remember you. As you give, God will continue to remember you with the press down, shaking together and running over. Are you listening to me? So it's important that we cultivate the attitude of giving. Who are you going to reach out to? Think about it, pray. To be a blessing to. Maybe somebody on the street. You might say, oh, no, pastor, you know what? You can, you can give whoever there, but I, I still want to sow into this ministry. Like I told you where we, last time we sent to Africa, I think they bought almost close to 50 bags of rice. You know what the, how much that is? <laughs> 50 bags of rice and other things. I have piles of suits and clothes that I'm about to ship now. That we're sending home to people who they have need for different things. When you sow, your, your finances are not just only for the building and all. It does other things. And as long as the person takes it and said, wow, God bless you. Do you know who get the blessing? You and I get the blessing. That's why the Bible says, Who, whatever and whoever you do this for, you are doing it unto me. You are lending it to me. You are not throwing it away. That's why I get, I get mad when people say, I gave my money and then I threw my money in that church. You didn't throw your money. You lend your money to God. You are lending it to God. Your time to God. It's not in vain what you're doing. Can I quickly just give you a few uh, points and we close? Reasons why it's more blessed to give than to receive. Why it's good to be generous, especially for a time as this. Yesterday, um, I went to Galveston with Mama. There's a certain place we normally used to go at the end of the year just to drive around and take some air and to pray, get away from so much. <clears throat> so we went out there to take a moment. And after that, we go to this nice restaurant and, you know, they, they cook some nice shrimp and grilled fish and what have you, you know, fried fish and all that. And so we bought some. And so while we were sitting down there, you know, mama felt in her spirit mind that, you know, we need to buy for this family and take some food there to them. I said, okay, sure. So we bought some, you know. And she said, yeah, I just felt we should just be a blessing to this family, you know. I said, all right, let's do it. So we bought it. And we went to their house. And unfortunately, we called one of them on the phone and uh, she was asleep. And when we got there, her husband was around. And when I called the husband, I said, hey, can you come out and get this thing? We brought something for your family. And he came out. Yes, sir. And he took it. He said, what is it, pastor? And I told him, I said, wow, 
eat some fried chips and chicken and uh, uh, chips and fish and shrimp and all of that. He was like, mm. I said, this is for you and your wife and the kids. He said, my wife is asleep. He said to me, she's knocked out. I said, and you have to keep it until she wakes up. He said, Pastor, I don't think so. I, I doubt if there's going to be any more left over. But I thank you for remembering me because we really needed this. <laughs> I said, we really needed this. I said, you better make sure you keep some. He looked at me and we smiled. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because to me it might just be something small. But to him or to them who are receiving it, it's something big. But guess who get the bigger blessing? Me that is giving. That's why the Bible says it's more blessed to give than what to receive. Amen. So let me give you a few points and then we close. Reasons why it's more blessed to give generously than to receive. Number one, giving generously obeys God's command. Acts 20, 35. Giving generously obeys God's command. Because God commanded us to be givers. So that's why it's important. The Bible says in everything, in everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. We must what? Help the weak. Remembering the words, the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts 20, 35. So the number one key to being blessed more is give generously, obeying God's command. Number two. Giving generously submits to God's lordship. When you are giving generously to the things of God, you are submitting to God's lordship. Our submission is really tested in the areas where our nature and situation make obedience more difficult. For most of us, money is one of those areas. It is so easy. So easy to submit to God in every other thing. But when it comes to giving, it's hard. Do you know that? Oh, no, I struggled with that at one point in time in my Christian faith. Okay, I'm not trying to be all righteous. You know, when you go to church and they, everything is good, the music is good. Anytime they come into talking about giving, that's when I go in the spirit and I start praying. You know, the people bow their head. I went to a church somewhere I was ministering, and it was time for offering. And some couple of people were leaving to go to the restroom. I told the usher, block the door, block, the, block that door. Everybody hold your pee until after the giving is done. Because you're rubbing yourself out of your blessing. Why did the pee not come before the offering? The pee is coming right when the pastor says it's time to give. That's when you are doing your hand like this. Excuse me, I want to go and use the rest. You will use it here. <laughs> That's how the enemy robs people out of their blessing, you know. And I used to be a part of that before. Anytime pastor talks about giving, I'm like, oh man, can we just worship, praise, and dance, and pastor make us laugh? That's okay. This is giving, man, 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 I ain't got no enough money. Then you start to look for little coins and little change, loose change. See, this is where the enemy robs us of out of a blessing. He said, give your best. The Bible said that God watched the woman, the widow who gave, she gave her all and her best. Among everybody that gave. Cultivate the attitude of giving because it's going to bless you. And when you give, give generously because you're submitting to the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if we only could remember that divine Lordship is not a threat, rather it's a place of greatness and safety. Number three, giving generously exhibits God's heart. Giving generously exhibits God's heart. That's God's heart. For God so loved the world that what? He gave. Only, only, only begotten son. Only begotten son. For those, for some of you here, that's not your only. You say you don't have money, but you do have. I mean, that's the main thing that the enemy is afraid of is your money. And that's what you're also afraid of is your money. I've learned that. Look, I will give and give and I'll trust God. And God will always make a way. Somehow, God will always what? Make a way. Are you listening to me? That's number one. Number three. Number 
Okay, number four. Let me give you a scripture real quick. We run out of time. James chapter 1 verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from what? Above and cometh down from the Father of lights. Number four. Giving generously trusts God's provision. When you are giving, you are trusting God. God is going to provide for you. When you are giving to the things of God, you are trusting that God is going to what? Provide for you. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 1. He said, cast your bread upon the waters for you will find it after many days. When you cast it, when you put it on the altar, you will find it. It's going to come back to you. After many days. You will give $100 as a seed offering or tithe or something. After many years, it's going to come back to you. In many folds. Amen. The last one. The last one. Giving generously advances God's kingdom. Giving generously advances God's kingdom. Many of us have contributed to Apple. We have contributed to Facebook and so many things. But when it comes to contributing to the things of kingdom, the kingdom, some people are scared about it. You know why? Because that is where your greatest blessing ties is lies. People put their mind on some things that will not give them spiritual satisfaction. But when the pastor said we are raising some amount of money to help the mission, those who are going for mission. This church support a mission in, in Israel. And some of you don't know it. It's called the Sidroth. Okay? Ministry. Every month. <laughs> there are some things that most of us don't know. We are tapping into another blessing. The Bible says, he that water it shall be what? Watered. So learn to be a giver in this season. Buy a little gift, whatever it is. Be a blessing to somebody. It doesn't have to be something big. Especially when it has to do with your church. To advance this church. Be a sower. If you are a part of this church and you are getting blessed. Think about this ministry. Where God is enriching all of us. As you give to the things of God. God is going to open new doors of jobs, opportunity. I pay for you is coming in the name of Jesus. I see a window of heaven opening doors for you. I see new cars coming. I see new homes coming. I see prosperity coming. I see new business idea coming. It doesn't matter the condition and the circumstances. I see something happening in your life. As you do generously for the things of God, God will remember you. Lift up your hands. Father, we give you praise. We thank you for such a time as this because we are here to be blessed. You said in your word that you will prosper us in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your people today. As we tap it into the ease of giving, remember us and open up the windows of heaven and pour us a blessing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Somebody shout amen. Come on, put your hands together if you've been blessed this morning. If that message bless you, come on, celebrate the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God in the highest.